the iPod, the iMac, the iPhone, the iPad, the i Apple Watch. In 2007, Apple released a brand new internet connected set top box called the Apple TV. But when it was first introduced, it had a somewhat different name. And now I can download content from iTunes and enjoy it on my computer, my iPod, and the big screen TV in my living room. ITV lets us enjoy our media on our big screen TV. So what happened? In 1998, Apple introduced the iMac, and it was the first time they'd used that lowercase i in a product name. The internet was just starting to gain traction, and Apple wanted the name of their new computer to invoke the excitement of that new technology. This wasn't just a Mac, this was a Mac you could use to get on the internet. An iMac comes from the marriage of the excitement of the internet with the simplicity of Macintosh. I also mean some other things to us. We are a personal computer company and all this product is born to network. The Apple marketing team came up with a bunch of other buzzwords beginning with I, but it was clear that the internet was the number one focus of this computer. As time went on, Apple introduced more products beginning with the letter I, and eventually the I became synonymous with Apple products. When the iPod was introduced in 2001, it didn't have any internet connectivity. By this time, the I didn't mean internet anymore. It meant cool, well-designed and futuristic technology products. But while this sort of brand recognition from a single letter was great in some ways for Apple, it was also a double-edged sword. Other companies started using the I prefix in their technology products, hoping to convey the same level of cool. And since Apple couldn't trademark a letter, they couldn't stop them. When Apple released the iPhone, at least one company had already released a product with exactly the same name and sued for trademark infringement. Apple eventually had to settle, doing so by making a meaningless agreement that they would explore interruptibility between the two devices. But still, this wasn't too much of a problem, until... ITV lets us enjoy our media on our big screen TV. People in the UK will be very familiar with the network ITV. Unlike other companies that hopped on the i bandwagon, ITV got there before Apple even existed. When independent television launched in 1955 as a disparate network of regional brands, it was the second television station in the UK and the first to broadcast advertisements. By the 21st century, the regions had homogenized onto the ITV brand. So Apple really only had two choices, use a different name in Europe or find a new name for their product worldwide. They were already leaning towards the latter when announcing the ITV. Now it's a code name internally, ITV, we gotta come up with a final name before we introduce it. They already knew they'd have to find a different product name, and they hit upon a very simple solution. We have a new name for it, it's called Apple TV. Like, this was a big departure from their existing naming conventions, even for Steve Jobs. Code name. So I'll probably stumble and call this ITV five times today by mistake, I apologize. The Apple brand had exploded over the past decade, and their products had become more and more desirable. Using it in the product name made sense. It very literally conveyed that this product was made by Apple, with all the expectations of high quality and reliability that came with that. The word could still be conveyed in a single character, but a new and entirely unique one, their logo. Better yet, the name was already trademarked, so other companies couldn't copy it and sue them in future. In 2014, when many were expecting Apple to announce the iWatch, they instead announced the Apple Watch. Since then, apart from already established product lines, no new product has been announced with the i prefix. The last time Apple named a completely new type of product with i, it wasn't a product at all, it was a service, iCloud, which was announced in 2011. So does this mean we could see the iPhone renamed the Apple Phone? Will your next iPad be an Apple Pad? Probably not. Now that Apple has won the trademark battles for these names and established the products in the minds of consumers, renaming them would just create confusion for not a lot of benefit. But Apple do have new product categories coming up. An augmented reality headset, maybe one day a car. It's very unlikely they'll use the i prefix for these, and much more likely they'll use the Apple prefix instead. Or maybe they'll do something else entirely. What do you think? What will they call their AR headset and their car? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time.